Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So now in the previous lesson, we went through Gauss elimination from a concept perspective, right? We worked out the two main processes of Gauss elimination, which is forward elimination. And what we're trying to get is the bottom left three zeros, then backward substitution, right? We got x3, x2, and x1, and we went through how this is done um, down here. Now in this lesson, we're gonna go into how to develop a code to do this okay so let's move on um let's actually go through a brief outline of the code so the first thing that we're going to do we're going to define our arrays right we have a matrix array here that we need to define and we also have a vector array down here that is going to house our solutions now this second part is we need to input the values that we're going to be manipulating and creating the solutions for right so we're going to have to be uh inputting the matrix that we have here then we're going to go through the two main processes of Gauss elimination, forward elimination and then backwards substitution. And this is just a very simple display code that just displays my final three answers down here. Now, in terms of defining our empty arrays, uh, we use, again, the dim function, the dimensionalize function. And we're going to call this matrix A, and it has three rows and four columns. Now, we're going to define that as A34. And in terms of the solutions down here, we only need to house a um, three solutions since we're dealing with a three by three uh, matrix uh, that require that has three unknowns. So we're going to have X three. Now, in terms of inputting, you have seen this before. It's a nested loop. Uh, since here we have three uh, rows, it's going to be one to three, and we have four columns, so it's going to be one to four. This is going to be A I J is equal to cells uh, ten plus I since we're starting here at 11 and uh, this starts at the 7th so it's going to be 6 plus j very simple you've seen this before and now let's actually go into uh, forward elimination code and the first thing I want to go through this is um, a nested loop within a nested loop within a nested loop so we have one two three loops so let's actually go through what each loop is doing so the first one is the k loop and k is defined from one to two so the question here is why is it looping twice the reason is because the first loop we're going to be creating this zero and this zero and in the second loop we're going to be creating this zero okay so that's the purpose of why defining k from one to two. First one is going to create those two zeros the second one is going to create this zero now let's go to the i loop so i is um, equal to k plus one uh, uh, to 3. So if k is equal to 1, the first loop, that's going to be i is equal to 2 to 3. So why is i defined as 2 then defined uh, as 3 is because the first row I want to eliminate the 0 in is the second one and then the third one. So that's why this loop uh, is defined to start from i is equal to 2 to 3. First loop, uh, i is equal to 2 is going to eliminate the 0 in the second row and i is equal to 3 is going to eliminate the 0 on the third row. So let's actually go into the I loop. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to calculate the factor. And the factor, as you remember, for the first row, it was 6 divided by 1. For the, uh, sorry, for the second row here, it was 6 divided by 1. And for the third row here, it was negative 3 divided by 1. And also when we did this one, it was 7 divided by negative 4. So for the first loop here, let's see, it was going to be I and what is i here when um, k is 1? So is i uh, is 2. So a21 divided by a11. So what is a21? It's basically 6 divided by 1. So that's for the first loop. That's for the first 0 that we're trying to create. 6 divided by 1. So this j loop goes through the subtractions that we did here for all of these terms to get this bottom equation. So actually, let's go with what the code is doing. It's taking a, and this is a21, is minus the factor times a11. Is basically a21 is this one, so 6 minus 1 times the factor, which is 6 minus 1 times 6, which is basically what we did here, right? We took 6 minus the 1 here times the 6, and also is 2 minus 1 times 6, so it's 2 minus 1 times 6 and so on for these two as well so this is what this code is doing now after we're done with this loop we're going to go to the uh, where i is equal to 3 the second loop of the i loop so this is going to be a 
3, 1 divided by a, 1, 1. So what is a, 3, 1? It's negative 3 divided by a, 1, 1, which is 1. So negative 3 divided by 1. So we created the factor for the third column, which we did here, which is negative 3. After we created the factor, we're going to go to the j loop, which again, it's going to do the subtractions that we did. And it's going to be a, 3, 1 minus the factor times a, 1, 1. Basically, negative 3 minus uh, the factor times a, uh, times 1 here, which is what we did, right? Negative 3 minus 1 times the factor. Then it's 4 minus 1 times the factor. And this is, was 4 minus 1 times the factor. And so after this point, we have created these two zeros. So now we're going to go to create this final zero. So the, we're done with the J loop, or sorry, we're done with the I loop. Then we're going to go to the second K, where K is equal to 2. Now, where k is equal to 2, i is now from 3 to 3, and that tells you it's only going to loop once. And the reason it's going to loop once is because we're only creating one zero here, as opposed to creating two zeros in the previous um, k, where k was equal to 1. So what is the factor for that? It's going to be a, and i is now 3, so a3, 2, divided by a2, 2, 2, which is basically 7 divided by negative 4. So that's our factor. And again, this loop is going to go through the subtractions that we did over here to create this final equation. So pretty simple, right? Pretty simple code. Uh, it's one uh, one loop within another loop within another loop. So the k loop, again, is defined um, 1 to 2 uh, because we're getting first those two zeros, then we're getting this zero. And then this i is basically doing the uh, creating the factor and doing the calculations that we did for these um, uh, equations here. Okay, so after we have done our forward elimination or we have created those bottom left three zeros, let's actually go ahead and do the backwards substitution. And the first thing I want you to notice is this equation. This equation has only x3 as the unknown, right? So we can actually solve for x3 here. X3 is just going to be 27 divided by 12. But in terms of the code, we want to put this in terms of matrix notation or matrix address. And in this case, it's basically this address of this one is going to be A34, third row, fourth column, divided by A33, right, which is this one. So 27 divided by 12, which is basically what we did here. So backward substitution, you already know the, um, the answer of the, the final row, okay? So say, for instance, I'm, I have a 4 by 4 matrix. I already know x4, which I'm going to use to get x3, which I'm going to use to get x2, which I'm going to use to get x1. Okay, so now we have x3. So now we want to develop a code to get x2 and x1, right? So this is a sum code, actually, or a subtraction code. Um, so the first thing, let's talk about um, how I'm defining the loop. The loop is i is equal to 2 to 1 because it's backward substitution. We got x3. Now where i is equal to 2, we're going to get x2. And when i is equal to 1, we're going to get x1. So when i is equal to 2, now sum, we're going to initialize the sum as a to 4. Right. So what is A24? Well, A24 is basically this 2 that I have here. Because when I was doing, creating um, X2 algebraically, what we did here, it was 2 minus this term here divided by negative 4. So that's what we're trying to imitate by the code. So we initialize um, the sum as at 2. So I initialize the sum at 2 here. And I want to subtract this. And this 8 here is a two three right so a two three so sum is minus a two three and you can see j starts uh, when i is two is j is three to three so we're looping only once and I'll I'll explain later why we're looping only once so the sum is going to equal to sum which again we initialized at two minus a um, and this i is 2, 3, so now is 8, which we have here, multiplied by x of 3, right? And the reason we have j is equal to 3 to 3 and we're going to loop only once is we're only subtracting one term here, okay? And after we create that sum, now we're going to say that my x2 is equal to that sum divided by a uh, 2, 2. 
and the a22 in this case is negative 4 so what I want you to notice is that all of this uh, code this first loop where i is equal to 2 I'm trying to create what I have down here right I initialized my sum at 2 then I went into this j loop which went from 3 to 3 which means it's gonna loop only once to subtract this term and it was minus a uh, and this was 2 3 which is basically was the 8 here minus, uh, multiplied by x of um, 3 right and after I'm done with that uh, after I get out of this loop I, I say that my x2 is equal to sum divided by a 2 2 right so let's actually go ahead to x1 so x1 we're going to be basically initializing the sum as a14. And a14 is basically this negative 3, right? So again, we're recreating this using code. So it's, we have that negative 3, right? And then we're going to say that sum is equal to sum, again, initialize the negative 3, minus a12, uh, right? Multiplied by x of 2, right? Basically, we're subtracting this term. Right, and then we're gonna go to the next loop. is gonna be a, um, and this is one three multiplied by x three. So you can see why uh, when i is equal to one here, we went from two to three because we're actually subtracting two terms here. We're subtracting this term that is defined in terms of two, and this term that is defined in terms of um, three. And after we're done with creating the sum. We divide it by AII or A11, but in this case, it has a coefficient of 1, so we divide by 1. So let's actually recap what I just uh, explained here. Uh, the final loop is I is equal to 1. We initialize the sum at A14. Again, that's this negative 3 here. And then we go, uh, J is going to be J is equal to 2 to 3. is going to loop twice, again, because we're subtracting this term and then this term. Uh, for the first loop, it's going to be A and this is going to be 1, 2 multiplied by x2, which is basically this. And now for the uh, second loop of the j, it's going to be a13 multiplied by x3, uh, which is basically this one. After we're done, we um, divide by the coefficient of x1, which is aii. And you have seen here, which is basically this one down here. And that's it. We have x3, which we already had from here. And we had x2 from the first loop of the i, and we had x1 from the second loop of the i. Now, after we're done, we just display the answers. Okay. So if I run this code, I should have I should input all these values. I should undergo forward elimination, backward substitution, and also display these values here. So if this code is written correctly, I should have the same these same three values in the same three cells. So let's actually run the code. Okay, great. So negative 0.25, negative 0.5, and 2.25. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.